All right, so we resume with uh, Vincent Calvez's second lecture. Hey, thank you very much. So uh, yesterday, we, I, I presented to you this uh, very particular experiment. Um, quite cruel indeed, where you have this, uh, this uh, cover glass, which is put on the top of the, of the colony. And uh, as you could see, there are many uh, possible observations and you end up with a model and, uh, and a wave. So which, uh, which I found interesting to show. And today we'll, we'll go, I, I, I try to go a little bit more into the details of such, uh, of such uh, modeling and such uh, wave propagation. And before I, I, I'm, I'm switching to the blackboard, let me show you a few more uh, experiments on, on uh, let's say, data about, uh, about uh, cellular movement. And this is another experiment I've been working on for quite a long time now. Uh, many people have already seen this picture in my, in my talks. And it's about a wave of, uh, of bacteria. So Escherichia coli, which is part of our, uh, our gut uh, uh, microbiota. And uh, so as you see again, if you see the, the top uh, picture is a micro channel at, uh, at, at several times, snapshots. And uh, it's a few centimeters long and half a centimeter width. So it's a, it's a, it's a micro uh, channel. And you see uh, a density of uh, bacteria. So the color is a high density of bacteria, which is a few uh, hundred of uh, thousands individuals. And you see that across uh, the experiment through time, across the channel, the population is actually moving towards uh, from one side to, to, to the other. And the reason is that initially you have a nutrient everywhere. In the, in the channel and the bacteria, they consume nutrient as yesterday in yesterday experiment cells consume oxygen. So those bacteria consume some, uh, let's say some sugar, some nutrients which is in the channel. And so they create their own uh, signaling gradient and they move to the, to the right. So I'm not going to, uh, to explain any more, uh, more details about this experiment, but what I wanted to show you is um, uh, trajectories of bacteria. So if, if you take the microscope and if you, reconstruct trajectories uh, from the videos. And that is what uh, Jonathan Saragosti did during his, his PhD at the uh, Institut Curie in Paris. Uh, you actually see uh, those tracks of, uh, of bacteria. And if you pick one of those in green, uh, you see that there is a very strong bias to, uh, to uh, one end of the channel due to this to this gradient of nutrient. So in particular, you see this green one was in, initially uh, at the back of the way, of the way, and this one of, of the wave, sorry, and this one was able to catch up, actually. And in this particular experiment, compared to yesterday, all the population is uh, is able to catch up. It's a it's a different, um, it's a different uh, setting. But anyway, if you if you look at this uh, trajectory, you see, and that's my point in this illustration, a very strong bias, and something which might uh, depart from uh, Brownian motion. If you, if you look at it. or brain motion with a strong drift, but I would rather uh, take another point of view, which is a very uh, 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 strongly persistent motion for this uh, type of offset. And uh, before going, let me show you another, yet another experiment with another kind of cells, where you actually will see uh, this very strong, uh, this very strong um, persistent motion. So this is Another type of bacteria, which is called a mixobacteria, which is another social. Um, so it's, it's a social bacteria, which uh, yesterday was a social amoeba. So it's a different type of cell, but it, it does a, the very same, uh, very analogous uh, life cycle from individual to a multicellular organism. And if you look in those uh, in those uh, pictures, you see that cells actually are moving straight for uh, quite a long time. And so this is one thing I'd like to, to show you. And uh, if you look into those uh, swarms, you see they are not all going into the same direction. So there is a strong heterogeneity in this, for instance, in this zone where you have, so of course, uh, heterogene it's heterogeneous in density, but it's also heterogeneous in uh, directions. They are not moving in the same direction. So this is something I'd like you to have, uh, to have in mind for, for, for the next uh, part. So this is a very uh, microscopic uh, view. And uh, something I think quite interesting, if you zoom out, and this is why it's interesting to do modeling. So this is the same, uh, the same, uh, the same experiment, but taking from uh, from above. So previously it was a, a, a snapshot of this area, and you see that on this uh, on, on the left side, uh, you see the, the wave propagating. So maybe the 
the the, the time uh, the time uh, uh, is not that good. Anyway, you see, you have this uh, very clear wave-like pattern on the left side, which is a fascinating pattern, and which is uh, characterized microscopically, but by very strong persistency and very strong heterogeneity in uh, in uh, in the in the in the population. So I'm not going to uh, to, to to say uh, anything more about the biology of those experiments. That's not my. Um, uh, I'd like to 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 give you some uh, insights about the uh, type of models uh, that uh, that can be done uh, with this type of uh, of uh, of let's say uh, case studies in mind, and in particular the case where uh, you replace. Uh, the Brownian motion by a persistent motion. Okay. So, uh, so, so the, the next uh, couple of, of lectures are about uh, structured population model. And ways. And I, I, as I said, the goal is. Uh, we need to understand uh, a propagation when you have, uh, let's say, a microscopic heterogeneity or, uh, let's say, local. Uh, the loose uh, description that I'll try to make it uh, clear on, uh, on examples. So, for example, what I have in mind in my, my uh, first illustration is uh, persistent motion. Of cells. And how you can describe that, you will assign to each individual, of course, its position. And it's a velocity. You will uh, work in the phase space where you have position. And velocity. And another example I will, uh, I will discuss uh, later next week is when you have, uh, let's say, an invasion front of a, of a, of a given species with in space with a phenotypic dependent, uh, let's say growth, uh, uh, yeah, growth rate or, or let's say uh, dynamics. In this case, we'll have X of T, uh, the position and let's call it theta of T, the trait uh, in your, of your individual. And uh, my interest into into uh, into that, which will become clear in the in the in the model, is that if you want to understand the propagation in space, so let's say the the, the propagation of level set in the, for the spatial density, of course it will rely on the shape uh, of the distribution uh, with respect to the to the velocity. So uh, essentially, the, roughly speaking, the, the propagation in space will be the average. The velocity, not quite up to some correction due to growth, but uh, it will essentially depend on the, on the distribution of uh, velocity. But of course, this is part of the problem, okay? And especially during a, a wave expansion, you expect that the, the individual, the particles, of the cells which are on the far right will have some uh, bias, either uh, slight or strong bias, with respect to velocity because they are. Farthest one. Okay, so this is uh, uh, all this kind of thing I'd like to discuss. I will uh, take the PD point of view because this is my uh, background. I'll try to be, uh, let's say, uh, to, to give some insight of what I understand from, uh, from, uh, from probability. And I, I, I would be very much interested in discussing further some of the aspects of what I, uh, I will present you on, on the PD to, to be discussed with, uh, from the probability uh, point of view. Okay, so let me uh, start with. Waves uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, with a velocity uh, uh, 
uh, dynamics, uh, which I will, what I call the reaction transport equations. So it's not diffusion anymore because of this persistent uh, uh, dynamics. And this is when you have X and so if I, uh, I try to draw what is uh, what uh, a trajectory of uh, Escherichia-Coli uh, this uh, bacteria looks like, it looks like you have uh, a straight motion with a position x of t and velocity v of t, and at some random times the velocity will change. And for bacteria, it can change very suddenly. Okay, it's uh, it's it's due to some. Uh, to some uh, cellular behavior, it, it can can it can really uh, change uh, very suddenly uh, directions, and then it does it again and again. And you see, you you can see this type of uh, of uh, of uh, of motion, and then you can of course have uh, branching with new uh, with new uh, when bacteria will divide. Of course, it can happen at a different time scale, but sometimes it's uh, it, it, yes. Uh, yeah, 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 of course, it's uh, due to uh, collision or to, uh, to perturbation by the other cells. This, uh, ah, this okay, no, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good question. So, uh, it's, it's a, it, it will be a, on the PD a linear process, it's a, it's an internal dynamics so at some at some random times. Uh, let's say the cell takes a decision to uh. To, uh, to change. Yes, yes. Yeah, there is no collision. There is no. Uh, it's it's a very. Uh, it's not a very dense uh, population. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, okay, and at some time you will have a new uh, a new uh, uh, cell di uh, division event. Then a, a new uh, a new cell a new particle will uh, start a new uh, a new path. Uh, and we will uh, assume that this new uh, cell starts with a random uh, velocity. Okay, so now my density is is not rho of t of x. It's now f of t x and v. It's a density in the phase space to uh, to follow the the, the the cell population. I will consider a 1D uh, case only. Uh, most of the results are. I, I would not say that uh, uh, dimension dependent, but uh, they, they, can, they, they have some analog in higher dimension, but I will stick to 1D. And more importantly, I will consider essentially two cases. Either V is bonded in some uh, symmetric interval, let's say uh, minus one, one, or V is in uh, the full line. So either you can have uh, only a limited uh, value of velocities, bonded velocities, or you may have arbitrary large and this uh, will make uh, uh, at some point uh, a difference. I will start with this case. And at some point I will, there will be a trap and I will uh, discuss uh, this case, okay? And uh, what I didn't say is these are exponentially uh, distributed. Uh, so time, between uh, reversions or between uh, change of directions are uh, exponential times. Okay, so this is uh, roughly my, uh, my, my uh, let's say my model on the equation. Are they in the Sorry? Are they in the yes, 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 yes. Okay. So my equation is for, for the density. So in 1D, you have transport at the velocity of V because it's a speed of, uh, of the cell. So just by definition, this is a, this is a transport at, a, at, a, at velocity V. And then, so this is how uh, the density will uh, change in space. And then there is also the change in velocity. And at some uh, random, random time with rate one, let's say, Uh, you have a change of velocity, so you 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 have uh, this uh, minus f, and the gain term is uh, integral of uh, f of t x and v prime. The, the 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 velocity before the change, and then I will assume that um, the new velocity is taken 
at random with some given distribution m of v, which will be independent of the velocity uh, before uh, the change. So if I look in one change, I have v prime, I have v after the change, and this v is uh, drawn from the probability distribution m of v. Okay, so it's very basic. And uh, you can think if uh, V, for instance, is uh, between minus one and one, you can think as this one be, uh, for instance, the uniform uh, uh, distribution in the interval. Okay. And this will be very good for, for, for what I have to, uh, to say. So, for example, so M of V is a uh, probability uh, distribution function. So, M, I may assume that it is uh, centered. And uh, I may also assume for some, uh, some reason that the infimum over minus one of one of M is uh, positive. It's uniformly uh, uh, positive. This is a technical assumption. And the good example you can have in mind is M is just one half of the uniform, it's just a uniform distribution on the interval. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is for the for motion and then uh, the growth term. Okay, so let me uh, repeat this, uh, this equation. Uh, let's say plus growth here. I forgot, but I will write it again with some uh, notations. So, uh, so the, 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 the full equation. So my notation will be as yesterday. But rho of t of x will be the spatial density, the marginal in, uh, in space. And in that case, I'll write it again, v dx. So this one is just m of v rho minus f. So this is uh, the change in velocity. We were at one with a new velocity uh, drawn from this distribution. And then my growth term, I assume that the new uh, particle take a velocity at random with the same distribution. So A is the rate of growth. And then I assume that it's just a logistic competition, which is at the, 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 the depth term is a quadratic as in Fisher KPP. So it is quadratic competition term. So this is like this is logistic. Uh, like growth term. Yeah. Sorry. So, so in, here on the left, it's really M of V. It's not M of V prime then. It's a M of V, yes. So you, you assume that the new one is independent from the previous one. Yeah, but that's... Okay. So it's not the generator, it's a dual. Okay. The density, the one which is conservative. Okay, thanks. So, uh, uh, let me maybe give some references about that. Uh, so, this has been studied by uh, Adler in uh, there is one book in 99. It was uh, studied before, but there is a nice uh, lecture notes in uh, 99. And then there is a <laughs> Uh, a paper by Schwetlick. And uh, maybe I, I didn't say what is the question. So these are references that answer one question is uh, wave propagation. Of course, you have, uh, let's say, a mo motion, which is unbiased because, as you see, if M is centered, there is no preferential direction. So there is no reason to go uh, uh, preferentially on the right, on the left. So if there is no uh, net motion on each side. So it's an unbiased motion. So it's persistent, but not biased. In average, and uh, on some in some scale, which is called the diffusive scaling, it looks like a, a broaden motion. If you if you uh, if you go to the to the very uh, back of the room, and if I do it very tiny, it will look like a, a broaden motion. And there is a, a very good theory to, to to do that. And then you add a logistic growth, and uh, even uh, maybe clearer if you integrate this in v. What do you get? So you get R, this is one, rho minus rho times rho. So it's exactly a rho minus a rho squared. So it's exactly the, the KPP uh, nonlinearity. 
So it's, it's very look, uh, it very looks like, uh, let's say, a KPP with uh, unbiased motion and uh, logistic growth. So you expect traveling waves. So this is one question which has been uh, uh, initially answered in this uh, in this paper. No, no not fully, but uh, there are uh, uh, first let's say first attempt. Then there is one very nice paper by Cuesta, Wittmeyer, and Schmeiser uh, from uh, 2012, and they rely on the following observation as I told you. If you if you if you do some scaling in that equation, which exactly uh, tells you that you are, I'm 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 drawing it very tiny, and I'm uh, sending you everyone to the to the back of the room. If you do this scaling, this will be very close to KPP. So you expect to have a speed of propagation which is two uh, two uh, times. Uh, okay, depending on the diffusion coefficient that will uh, uh, come out of the m of v here, the distribution on the r. So let's put it one on one here. So you, you expect to have a speed of propagation of, uh, of speed two. And uh, they do a kind of perturbation analysis. And they say, okay, if you have a small parameter only, a scaling parameter, and you are close to this, uh, to this uh, KPP uh, equation, then you expect to have a, a traveling wave, uh, which is close to the KPP traveling wave. And this is what, the, what they do by, uh, let's say, expansion uh, in this uh, small parameter. I will not get the, the details of it. Uh, it's an interesting result, but it turned out that you can do uh, it. You, you, you can prove and uh, describe traveling wave even far from the diffusive regime. And this is something we did with uh, Emery Gouin in PhD thesis and uh, Grégoire Nada with, uh, with PD. Uh, with PD uh, tools. So how do, you, uh, how do you answer this question? Uh, it's very... Uh, it's, it's nearly a, a, a linear equation up to the, the quadratic term, which will be neglected as usual because you expect that the maximal, the maximal pair capital growth is for a density which are small. So when you are really uh, at the edge of the, of the, of the wave front, so you will, uh, you will soon uh, uh, neglect this, uh, this guy. And if you neglect this guy, you have a super solution, something which is uh, an upper approximation of your of your density because you have removed the negative term, and this is a is a linear equation, so you you might hope to solve it. So this is the first step. The question is existence of traveling waves and the construction of them, and there is a, a side question which is a spreading speed. Or uh, let's say reasonable initial data, the confined initial data, which is let's say compactly supported. Usually, the, the, these questions are, as you know, uh, close to each other. So this is the question. Uh, there is one uh, tool which turned out to be uh, to be uh, very important, which is a uh, let's say a comparison principle, which is a. Uh, PD, uh, PD lemma, which enable to compare uh, to compare solutions of equations where you have a dropped uh, term for which you know the, the sign. Uh, so in this case, what you know is that as for the for the for the for the equation, if you have two initial densities which are ordered in some way, and here I add some additional assumption which is they are below the stationary distribution you can you can see that m of v is a stationary distribution because of course it's stationary there is zero here uh, m of v is a stationary for the for the change of uh, distribution of course because it's a stationary uh, measure and it's also a stationary for the growth so uh, this is a stationary distribution and if you have uh, two densities which are sandwiched between uh, positive and the stationary uh, distribution, then they remain order at all time. Okay, so this is something that will be used if you are able to compare things. Uh, you can propagate this comparison through the, through the equation. Anyway, so this is not what I would like to, to focus on. I'd like to focus on the, the, 
uh, what you can say about the problem without uh, without competition, the linear one. And because it's a linear equation, of course, we expect uh, exponential solution, at least in space, because of uh, invariant by translation. If you have a linear equation, which is invariant by, invariant by translation, you expect to have an exponential uh, solution. And the first step toward construction problem wave is uh, the uh, solution to the linear. Question. So I, I'm looking at something which is an approximation from above. So because it's the same, let me just put one plus r here uh, in front of the of the growth term because of course these two, uh, this one and this one, they combine, and I I remove. The negative term is this is why I put a bar here yeah, because it's something which is certainly above my true solution. Okay, so can I solve this equation? So again, it's a, it's a, you look for exponential solution. It propagate as waves with speed c. Okay, so this is for the space spatial density. And then you look for something which is uh, which has a separation of variables. So this might appear a little bit mysterious at first glance, but there are very good reasons for that. So let me uh, uh, really uh, insist on this point. This is a let's say an educated uh, guess, an, ed an ed educated guess. There are some good reasons for which uh, you you look for something which is uh, on uh, where x and v are truly uh, separated. Okay, so what happens if you put this into your uh, equation? You will you will certainly recognize what is usually done, except that now you have the velocity variable, which is part of the game. So uh, I will have a lambda c, and I divide by the exponential in x. So it's a lambda c f in v for the time derivative then i have minus lambda v f for the space derivative and this must equilibrate one plus r m of v rho is integral of f of v prime dv prime when i divide by the exponential which is only uh, uh, x dependent minus f Okay, so it's a linear equation in F now, which in fact you can interpret as a, as a spectral problem. So this is a spectral problem. In uh, let's say this is the eigenvalue. So eigenvalue is lambda c. Uh, this one, uh, because it's my F, which is there. And I divide by exponential on each uh, on each side uh, because of, of the separation of variable. The exponential goes outside the integral. This is uh, the only term you have to care about, and uh, it, it cancels on each on each side. And you can interpret f as a kind of a stationary measure of some process. Okay, maybe we will. I try to to give you some insight on the probability stack on the probability side of what is uh, this f here. Okay. And uh, lambda c, uh, you can see as an eigenvalue. Okay, and you can solve it explicitly. So uh, you have to just to put uh, things on the on the on the right side. If I divide everything by uh, by f, no, I, I do it the opposite. I okay. Let me uh, let me do do it uh, slowly. I will have the one plus. So I, I put the minus f on this side. So it's one plus lambda minus c times f of v, which is equal. To one plus r m of v integral of f v prime v prime. Okay, and now what I have to do is to put f in the correct form. 
So this must be equal to one plus R M of V of both one plus lambda C minus V. So my uh, distribution F is explicit. So up to a uh, rescaling, it's a probability distribution. It's a spectral problem. So F is uh, up to a multiplicative constant. So I can choose it to be one, but uh, anyway. So uh, this will integrate to one and there is no F here anymore. There's only the, the lambda C, which is unknown. And this must, this ensure that I must have one, which is one plus R M of V over one plus lambda c minus v okay so this must be uh, that way and this is what is called the dispersion relation dispersion relation which is analogous to lambda c uh, equals to lambda square plus one plus r sorry so this is something if, if you are given lambda you have a value of C and it's the same. If you are given lambda, there is an implicit relationship that tells you what is C. This is monotonic with respect to a C. So there is a unique C uh, which solves this, uh, this equation. Okay, and it's a very, uh, very uh, analog of the, the classical, uh, the classical uh, dispersion relation of uh, fischer kp Okay, and uh, if you do some uh, scaling into this, uh, this equation, uh, you will recover exactly this one with the correct different coefficient, which, com which comes from the velocity distribution. It's perfectly consistent with, uh, with uh, what I told you before. If you are in some regime where your motion looks like a Brownian motion, uh, you will recover exactly this uh, relationship. But it does not need to be uh, close to a Brownian motion. Okay, if you, if you put every unit to be one, a further one, this is uh, very different from that. And uh, let me just warn you, I will, uh, I will come to that uh, later, maybe uh, today or maybe on Monday. But in this expression, there is a trap. I told you there is a trap somewhere. So here, we have to be very careful about one condition that I will discuss uh, later. Okay. So, uh, so once you have done that, uh, I will not do any uh, details, but you have at least one explicit approximation from above of your problem and uh, by some uh, additional technical uh, uh, considerations, you can also get a lower bound and doing that you can uh, prove uh, existence of traveling waves and uh, propagation at, so, at the minimal speed uh, for, this, uh, for this problem. So it is very, very uh, close. It's very similar to, uh, to fissure capacity. Maybe some observation to, uh, to uh, Something I, I, I told you about the, the shape on the, on, the, on, the, on the speed. So if you take this equation here, this one, and you integrate in velocity, okay, it's only, a, there is no space anymore. If you integrate this in velocity, what do you get? You get, uh, and you assume that F is uh, of, uh, it's the probability distribution itself. So if you integrate, Uh, this uh, this one. What do you get? Lambda c equals to integral of v f uh, lambda. Sorry, it's lambda v f, and this is plus one plus r m is of uh, is probability distribution minus one. Okay, so it means that C is, uh, let's say, the, the velocity average when I divide by lambda plus R over lambda. So as I told you, uh, actually, it's close to the, the, what, I, uh, what, we had, what, we, what we had yesterday where the speed was decomposed as a bias due to, uh, to, uh, to uh, aerotactism and the growth. So it's very close. Uh, of course, this is very natural. So the speed is a velocity average on the on the on the, the, the growth. Uh, but of course, this is unknown to, 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 to know this value. You have to solve this problem and you have to find the, the velocity distribution. So f of so why uh, this is not zero? This might be another interesting point. 
as I told you, M is symmetrical. So there is, of course, a perfectly uh, symmetrical uh, random motion for, uh, for a given uh, individual. So this is expected, uh, you, you might expect this is zero, but this is not uh, because of the lambda. Okay. If, lambda if lambda is zero, if the density profile is flat, of course, you get one plus R uh, M of V. And so F will be symmetrical because M of V is symmetrical and the velocity average will be zero. But if lambda is not zero, then there is a bias in this, uh, in this distribution, which is due to the fact that you are looking at the uh, front because lambda is not zero, a decaying uh, in space. And if you do that, of course, you, are, you have more particles coming from the left side because they are just more numerous. And this uh, creates a bias in your velocity distribution at the edge. And this bias uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, have, uh, will make this uh, velocity not zero. Okay? So it's, 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 not, uh, it's not an argument uh, that's a rigorous argument. And as I told you, you, you cannot uh, guess uh, much more than, uh, than what I told you, but uh, you, you can interpret this, uh, this uh, bias due to this, uh, this lambda, which is the fact that you are in a, in a, in a front. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? At this? If not, I will reformulate, I will make a last reformulation of this identity with some notation that I will use uh, later, uh, which is that uh, lambda C is given uniquely from uh, my, uh, my uh, let's say my dispersion relation here. And because of monotonicity in the denominator here, and I can write it lambda C equals to H of lambda. If I like, so it's a, if, I, if, I, uh, if I'm given lambda, I can compute lambda C by this uh, implicit relationship and H is convex. It's not uh, complicated to see that H is a convex function. And uh, as it is, uh, as you can guess, it's called the Hamiltonian. And this one is in the classical case, uh, KPP is lambda square plus R. And now this is, uh, this is not uh, something different. And as you might have uh, guessed, there is a, now a, a, a strong link with a large deviation. And now from, from uh, lambda C uh, F, you can deduce existence of a traveling wave for a speed C, uh, which is between C star and the maximum of velocity. Okay, I will not discuss the fact that uh, it's not expected that the speed can go uh, faster than the maximum possible uh, speed. Of course, it's possible because due to growth, you can always have a traveling wave even without uh, motion uh, due to the initial data on a very specific uh, profile, but I will not discuss that because they are totally uh, not uh, physical. Okay. Uh, now I like to, because there is some Hamiltonian function, it's expected that there is some link with, uh, with, uh, with large deviation. And this is what I like to, uh, to discuss. And I will take uh, something which I'm not comfortable with. I try to present the probabilistic uh, point of view. So it might be, uh, let's say, uh, not very uh, uh, fluid. I apologize in advance, but I, I hope this will, uh, this will uh, uh, help you to, uh, to go into this, uh, this subject. And uh, I expect uh, uh, possibly and uh, hopefully some, uh, some, feedback, some feedback. So uh, my next uh, topic is uh, connection. with uh, large deviation. Uh, and this is in the case where there is no growth. Actually, the, as in the KPP equation, it's not so important to have a growth at this point. What is really important is to understand the dynamics of those uh, particles, which will go uh, very far away 
uh, in advance. And then when you couple with both, you can, uh, you can deduce uh, wave uh, expansion. Uh, so I will uh, take the point of view of one uh, article, which I liked very much by uh, Fagionato, uh, Gabrieli and Ribezzi. Which is from uh, 2008, which is itself, if I understood well, inspired by a, a, a memoir by uh, Yuri Kiefer in the same years. And which, uh, if I understand well, is essentially to do uh, the large deviation principle for what they call uh, PDMP, piecewise deterministic Markov processes, which is a uh, uh, one occurrence of uh, uh, for, for which uh, this velocity jump process when you uh, go straight and change velocity is one uh, is one occurrence so the idea is you have um, and again i apologize for the specialist in the room it's not something i'm familiar with i just want to mention that there is a, actually a connection with what i i i will i presented there and what i will uh, continue uh, uh, later so uh you are given some uh, process which is not stochastic at this point. So you have uh, x of t, and here, what plays the role of uh, velocity is one, uh, let's say, uh, some index sigma, which is a stochastic variable. And uh, so x is moving with some speed over some. Uh, some uh, uh, velocity, uh, some vector field, which is indexed by sigma, and at uh, random times, which follows some uh, ray with some rate gamma of uh, sigma, uh, depending possibly on x. Uh, you can have a jump uh, sigma of t. Can jump with uh, with probability uh, with uh, probability transi uh, with transition probability uh, which is given by some p of a sigma oh, this notation is sigma sigma prime which itself depends on x okay so we have position uh, with some uh, vector field uh, a indexed by sigma and at some random times, uh, which might depend on, on everything, uh, you can change uh, sigma, which uh, change the vector field. Okay, so you can move in uh, that direction with uh, with uh, because it might not be straight. Actually, you can move with with some vector field with uh, like that, and at some point, you will change to another uh, to another uh, vector field. With, with uh, possibly uh, so uh, discontinuous uh, C1 discontinuity here because you suddenly change your uh, your vector field. Okay, and you, you can continue uh, like that. So if you write the generator of that, so one example, of course, is what I have in mind is when A is simply uh, A of sigma, is simply sigma, the velocity itself, which is uh, my, uh, my, my case. Okay, uh, and does not depend on X. Because and this is where the case where you have a just straight uh, straight lines, but sometimes it's not very important in that point. So uh, you have the generator of that process, which is uh, the generator is LTG, which is uh, of x and sigma, which is a sigma of x and gradient x of g plus the rate of uh, change p of sigma sigma prime x uh, times g of uh, sigma prime x minus uh, g of sigma x. The sum is in sigma prime. Uh, so this is a generator, which is a dual of uh, the kinetic equation I, uh, I, uh, I just I presented in the, in the beginning. So there are two results. In uh, this 
article by Fadio Nato. The first one is an averaging principle, what they call an averaging principle, which is essentially to say that there is a stationary measure uh, on that process, which is just a change of uh, sigma. And if you, uh, if you, uh, if you accelerate time uh, locally, you will see that uh, the, the vector field of your uh, of your uh, of your uh, average process is essentially the average of the of the vector field uh, on this uh, stationary measure. So if you if you do it uh, if you if you if you accelerate time and if you localize, you will see your if you accelerate time, you will see your 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 uh, <coughs> your uh, your trajectory your particle moving in some average uh, direction, which will be given by the, the stationary measure of this uh, of this process. So I will not present that, and I will present. The second part of this paper is about the large deviation uh, principle. <coughs> and what they say is that there, 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 is, uh, there is actually a large deviation uh, principle. With red function. G of X and mu. We have some uh, some new which I will uh, some new which I will uh, discuss in a, in a, in a minute. Let me just uh, so what is mu? Mu is a some parameterization of the curve. Which is the following uh, x of t, which will be the initial time plus um, the summit sigma, the integral from 0 to t of a of sigma and uh, x of s. So you're, you're, you, you just integrate your, uh, your, your equation uh, there, except that on each time you assign a mu of sigma of x. Uh, of s uh, ds which is to say at each time you have some probability to have some uh, some uh, to have chosen some uh, some vector field with a constraint that uh, mu is a, is a is a probability so mu is one almost everywhere so for each time you have uh, a probability uh, Distribution on your uh, on your vector field, and as I told you, in the averaging principle, this mu is uh, the stationary uh, distribution of this uh, jump process in uh, in sigma. But in the large deviation principle, uh, mu will be different. Similarly, as what I told you, in the front, you don't expect to have the, the stationary uh, uh, measure of the jump distribution, and this will be part of the of the of the this is actually part of the rate function. So in the rate function, you have to uh, now two things which are, let's say, uh, coupled together by this uh, relationship. And what is a J? Is uh, the integral from zero to uh, capital T of some current function G of X of T mu of T. T and uh, the current is J of x and u, which is some uh, very some um, a rational uh, formulation, the sub primum in uh, some for some vector value, and then you have mu sigma, and uh, this one is a sum of uh, gamma sigma. So I put it outside p of sigma sigma prime in x of z of sigma prime over z of sigma. So it's something which to me uh, looks uh, totally uh, mysterious. I don't have this uh, this background, and I, uh, I I don't see much of what is uh, this um, this uh, J, except that this looks like uh, uh, an eigenvector, and here you see the, the same velocity, uh, uh, the, the the distribution with respect to uh, sigma or the velocity, because sigma parameterizes 
the, the, the velocity vector field. But this is what is uh, written in that, uh, in that paper. And um, if I uh, maybe in, in, the, in the few uh, last minutes, I will try to write the dual formulation of this, which is the one uh, we, uh, we, we came uh, to in, uh, with, our, uh, with our approach. So uh, let me write it in this way. So there is a, there is a dual formulation. Let's call it PD. It's all based on PD argument. Something which is the same. It took me actually some time to, uh, to do the connection. Uh, I mean, with algebra, but it's a, it's a very same thing. And the idea is that now if I start from my, uh, my PD, DF over DT plus V, DF over DX, equals to mv rho minus f with r equals to zero. And to see uh, the large deviation, something which, uh, which will occur at some scale, I have to uh, accelerate uh, space and time. So I have to enlarge space and accelerate time. And this is why I will change the, the values, the variables, the units with some uh, parameter epsilon. And epsilon is meant to go to zero, which is to say that I'm looking at in the new, new uh, units of time, uh, it corresponds to very large original t and a very large original x. So this is the, the, the correct scaling to catch this, uh, let's say, um, a tail distribution, which, uh, which is uh, uh, connected to large deviations. And as you can see, it's very well adapted to front propagation because uh, x over t remains constant with this scaling. So it's not a diffusive scaling. It's not something where you accelerate time uh, to have x squared over t, which is uh, of order one, which remains constant. Here it's really, a, let's say, an hyperbolic scaling where it's a velocity x over t, which remains constant, OK? Uh, which is fine because you don't change the velocity units, only x and t there. So it's perfectly consistent with this uh, change of, uh, of units. And if you do that, there is one result uh, uh, that we did with, uh, with Emric Boin uh, during his, uh, his PhD uh, thesis in this, uh, 2012, which is that if you look at this equation now in the new units, what, what, uh, what does it uh, change? Uh, there will be an epsilon here because you have accelerated time and we have a prime here. Uh, another epsilon there because you have accelerated space and you don't change velocity. And now when epsilon goes to zero, uh, f, will, uh, will, uh, f will be singular, but the log of f will converge uh, of f epsilon. I put an epsilon also in my distribution because now it will strongly depend on epsilon and become singular when epsilon goes to zero, but the log of f will not. And this, it's a function of t, x, and v. And this will converge when epsilon goes to zero to some u of t of x, and that's it, no velocity here. And u is a solution, is a viscosity, is the viscosity solution. Of du over dt plus h of du over dx. Okay, and this h is the same Hamiltonian function, as I, uh, pre I uh, showed you previously, it's a convex function, uh, which happens to be the, uh, sorry, uh, the Legend, uh, Legend transform of this, uh, this, uh, this J. Yeah, there is a, uh, uh, um, for jump processors, if I well remember, the Legend transform is related to the function exponential X minus X minus one, no, not something like that. Um, so if you have two uh, velocities, uh, in this case, there is an exponential function uh, in the. You mean XP, you, you have an explicit uh, function for the for the. So I'm sure that if you have only two uh, velocities, so let's say uh, uh, a is just plus or minus one. In this case, this simplifies a lot, and you have uh, you may have some exponential uh, functions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is the case if if uh, you have only two velocities, the so h is uh, is uh, is uh, is I think is a uh, 
Yeah, is a, is a hyperbolic cosine or something like this. Uh, okay, I think time is uh, almost uh, uh, finished. Uh, it's okay. I will stop there. I will uh, I will resume uh, doing this uh, this um, uh, this carefully, uh, explaining two things. The first thing is why there is no velocity here. Which is a kind of averaging process because, uh, in some sense, uh, you have a station, some kind of stationary uh, distribution in velocity because you see that you you lose this variable in the in the limit. So it is it is as if the velocity process uh, would be a stationary, and actually it is. And you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, guess, of course, that the velocity distribution is. The m of v that I, uh, the f of v, sorry, that I presented before, and which is very much related to this, uh, to this uh, uh, point of view here. Uh, and then, uh, so this is one thing that we will see on Monday. And uh, the second thing is a trap that I, uh, I maybe I, I, uh, I erase, but I will just write. To remember f of v over integral of f prime. Okay, it's, let's say it's a, we, we, we normalize to be a probability distribution. So it's one plus r, or even if r is zero, is, uh, if r is one, so it's just m of v over one plus lambda c minus v. Okay, so remember this was a formula for the velocity distribution, which happens to be the velocity distribution, which uh, is a corrector to this, uh, to this, uh, to this. Um, to this uh, to this uh, convergence here. Of course, if you see that if f uh, has a contribution of order one, which is f of v, when you take the log and multiply by epsilon, this uh, you don't you don't see it at the limit. This is what happens. And just to conclude, uh, you see here that let's say if v is in uh, R, uh, this is certainly not uh, possible. And the reason is that f has to be non-negative because it's a it's a distribution, okay. And this the denominator is linear with respect to v, okay. So if lambda is not zero, whatever c is, it's not possible that v can take arbitrary large values without violating the the, the positivity, the non-negativity of f. So clearly there is a there is an obstacle here. If v can take uh, arbitrary large values, suppose m is a Gaussian distribution, for instance, so uh, with, a, with a non compact support at the, the entire uh, interval. If, f, if m is a Gaussian distribution, you divide by a linear function, it cannot remain positive, and it, it, it must. Okay, so there is, a, there is a trap here, there is a, a clear obstacle. And of course, in this case, uh, there will be no, uh, no velocity, and there will be a front acceleration. And there will be a much more complicated dynamics in that uh, analog of the theorem. I will uh, tell you what is the analog of the theorem. And I will try to tell you what is the analog of this uh, rate function when you have uh, a Gaussian distribution in velocity, which allows you to take arbitrary large value, which, of course, when you look at uh, those particles which are far away, uh, they can experience such, uh, such large velocities. But this is for Monday. And have a very good weekend. Right, are there any questions? Yes, is there a mic? Oh yeah, there is one. Um, I have a possibly stupid question about this curve relation. Um, could you please quickly write down the classical uh, dispersion relation? So sure. The one which doesn't hold in this model. Yeah. So the classical one is uh, lambda c is, uh, let me call it with uh, the, the diffusion coefficient d lambda square plus r. Okay, and um, so this isn't true in this model, but uh, you made another observation, which was that um, that c is equal to the average speed plus r over lambda. Yeah, let me write it uh, like just r lambda. Yes. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. If, so if the I think there wasn't a d earlier, but so if the d is one, then we would get the first from the second if we replace the average speed by lambda. Is there a coincidence or is there any meaning? Yeah, there is a meaning. This is called the diffusive limit. And if I have two minutes, I will do it. Because it's just in, in that, in, the diffusive limit is a complicated thing because it's a, it's a PD uh, uh, 
uh, it's a PDE result, but you can do it directly on the on this algebraic uh, identity there. So you just have to say that you start from uh, this relationship, which is one plus R M of V one plus lambda uh, V minus uh, C minus V. And you said what, what you say is that in the diffusive limit, you have to uh, to look at uh, such a scale that uh, lamb, uh, the velocity, uh, the lambda will be small. Okay. And then what you have to do is to expand uh, this and C will be small as well. And if you do some Taylor expansion and you have to say that R is a small also because in the diffusive limit, you have to accelerate time to see the Brownian motion. So you have to say that the growth rate is not too big because otherwise you will just have a super large reproduction. So I will, I will transform that to have an epsilon square, which is my, uh, my acceleration uh, of the time. And here I'm looking at M of V and I have to look at, uh, so lambda is a one over, uh, is the inverse of, uh, is of, um, of uh, it scales like a one over X. Of course, so this is an epsilon uh, lambda c minus uh, must be an epsilon c, I think, because the speed will be small because uh, uh, it is a uh, it is uh, it is a small whatever. There is some scaling which turns to be uh, I think exactly this way. And if you do now the expansion in epsilon, if I'm not mistaken, okay, I am certainly mistaken, so I might not be, do the competition, but I. I, I, uh, I claim that if you do uh, the, 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 the Taylor expansion of that, of that or the, the correct one, if it's not the correct uh, scaling, you do the Taylor expansion on the, on the correct scaling and you get uh, lambda C after many constellations because of, of course you should see that if epsilon equals to zero, you have one, one, and one. So have, there is one uh, term which drops and then the epsilon term should drop as well because yeah, the epsilon term drop because then the next order, the epsilon term is epsilon v times m, but this is zero, which is a consistent with the DC limit. So it, it remains only epsilon square term. And if you factor out what is epsilon, you get uh, integral of v square m of v, which is a diffusion coefficient because you have chosen rate one here. Otherwise it would be this divided by this uh, times lambda square, which is this lambda square here. Uh, plus R. So I'm certainly uh, uh, mistaken. All right. Are there any other questions? Maybe uh, online, Julia? Okay. Here you didn't actually talk about this uh, the diffusive limit, no? I mean, when you send the, when, when, when you take the scale in such a way that you go to, to, to the diffusion equation. Mistaken, as also, we have, to, uh, we have a, a result about. This is what uh, some people call the, the linear Forsman equation, right? It is actually it is a linear yeah, Forsman equation. And, and yeah. in, in some cases, which are pre, uh, are very simple, on which uh, uh, the, 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 the rate at which you, the exponential rate at which you wait for, uh, for changing the system, uh, there is a possibility that you don't actually have uh, the diffusive limits. You have uh, super diffusivity and uh, all, all those things. Yes. So do you see that uh, in, in this particular picture or you really need to go to the to the long time scale to? Okay, so it's a good question. So the question is, suppose that M in this case has no uh, quadratic moment, has no variance. So this is certainly not a correct scaling. So it means that you have to change your scale and this is what is called superlinear uh, uh, diffusion when, uh, when essentially this is uh, infinite. In this case, you have something which is uh, faster than diffusion. It's called super diffusion. So, but my point is, of course, if you do that, it will uh, spread uh, faster, but you don't even need to do that. My point, if, if there is only, only one take home, take home uh, message, is that when you, do, when you look at this scale and when you do the diffusive limit, at least from my uh, background, so I was very loose on that, so maybe just precise what is the diffusive limit. It's specific to the case where, as I said, M of VDV is, uh, is, uh, is zero, so there is no net uh, motion on uh, each side. And to do that, you have to rescale T and X as T prime over epsilon square and uh, X prime over epsilon. So you have to need to, to enlarge uh, space and you have to, to accelerate time, let's say faster 
for because uh, because of course if you if you if you if you if you if you if you, if you, if you keep on the same uh, uh, on the same uh, level these two things because uh, there is no net motion you you see hardly nothing okay so you have to uh, to have this very important scaling here which is called the diffusive scaling to see uh, motion and if you do that your PDE your uh, your equation f of t of x the result essentially says that when epsilon goes to zero this will go to rho t of x uh, times m of v and this rho will solve uh, it equation okay so this is uh, the essentially the, the result okay my point if there is one take-home message is if you are looking for waves propagation this is certainly not the good scaling because you are looking for something which where x of t x and t are propagating at the same uh, at the same order so certainly if you, if you do that you are going to miss the wave propagation so my point is uh, looking for, for, for this equation on f you may you might either uh, look on the wave expansion in some regime which is uh, x of t uh, uh, over epsilon both over epsilon which is a kind of long time uh, asymptotics in space or you might look at the diffusive regime let's say in the bulk and these two things are completely totally different they don't give the same uh, because they are not compatible okay and uh, the point is uh, so it means in some sense that the wave propagation or uh, alternatively speaking the the large deviation principle of this uh, process is in x and v is very different from the one of the Brownian motion because it's not the same it's not the same uh, scaling Okay, it's, it's uh, another way of uh... actually in, the, in 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 that work we identify a second way on which uh, the super diffusive may appear, which is that uh, for some reason when your velocity is 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 slow, yeah, you wait longer to jump, yeah, you will still have uh, super diffusivity, yes, yes, and then super diffusivity can happen at that scale t over epsilon x over epsilon. Okay. So I don't know if it's, uh, if that, uh, I mean, what, what should you do in that case here? It's, uh, you, you, you need to do something else or so another scaling or it is going to show up, I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's a another very good question. Let me answer and say, it might be, uh, I don't want to be, let's say, uh, very, uh, okay. my answer is that I, I, I know how to do a compact support. So there is no, 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 no tails or whatever. And I know how to do the Gaussian. And apart from that, I have no, uh, I don't mean that I, uh, there might be strategies. I, I have not explored that, it's, it's open. But anything else on the Gaussian distribution, uh, I have no result. So I know that uh, you can, uh, but even in, for the Gaussian distribution, you, you have some uh, interesting behaviors and we have not pushed it further than the Gaussian. But every, of course, every kind of uh, distribution has uh, its own uh, features. Okay, maybe let's call it a day. And I suggest we thank all the speakers of the afternoon again.